I'm recording some of my pond to show you my goldfish. <laughs> and I got little minnows in there too. Anyway, I'm doing a voiceover because recording outside with the with the sound of the water running was too distracting and it's just better for me to do a voiceover. And um just share it with you that way. I'll annotate as I see things come up. But anyway, what I'm doing is I'm doing a 500 gallon water change on the pond. I am draining all of my rainwater from my barrels into the pond, which will take almost an entire day to do. But it slow, slowly but surely changes out that water, pushes a lot of the old water, the stagnant water out. And that gives the fish some nice, fresh, clean water. So, as I'm doing that water change, I'm oxygenating the water and everything else. And you can see all the leaves and debris around the edge over here. I leave that in there because that's where the goldfish spawn. When they do decide to breed and spawn and everything else, they like to go into the leaves and the bushes and the plants and all that stuff. So I leave that specifically for that reason. Yeah, the water's a little bit greenish. That's only like two days worth of sun that caused that algae bloom to come out. So that's one of the reasons why I got to change that water pretty rapidly. Because that water has a lot of fish waste sitting over the winter and all. And that's full of nitrates and nitrites. The algae really does... Uh, build up pretty heavily to be honest with you so uh, it'll it'll get it'll grow really quick so I'm changing that out of there and that'll reduce it anyway but yeah there's the uh, water plants that's the anacreus I think it's called anacris that was the plant that flowered last year that's actually native to Pennsylvania but I actually bought these I didn't actually fish it out of a a pond or anything. I actually bought my anacris from my fish tanks. So yeah, I'm trying to catch some footage of them swimming into the leaves. You'll see them do that from time to time. And when they start like flapping sideways and chasing each other around and all that, that means they're ready for spawning. But they're getting ready to spawn now. This is actually pre-spawn behavior. They're looking for a place where they where they can go and, you know, do the fish thing. Yeah, you'll see there's a dead frog in here somewhere. Once I get to it, I'll point it out. One of the frogs died. It does happen. We do get dead frogs uh, from time to time. They do die. They don't make it through the winter. Yep, the fish are just swimming around. They're enjoying themselves. Yeah, you see the dead frog right there? I keep passing it. I do zoom in on it at some point. Yeah, I, I should get some crayfish in here. If I had crayfish, they'd eat that thing right up. Yeah, he died. I gotta get him out of there. Maybe I'll dig him out tomorrow. I have about between 10 and 14 fish. I used to have about 20, but I'm down to about 14. So survival of the fittest. Now, I got these little brown fish swimming around in there. I don't know where they came from. I don't know what these are. I'm pretty sure it's from the goldfish from spawning last year. 
but they're all brown and they're small, which is bizarre. There's not one orange little one, they're all brown. That's kind of strange. Yeah, the water's not too cloudy. It's not too bad. But it is stagnant from the fish just being in there all winter, you know. Just sitting in there. and So it is stagnant. You really do got to get that water out in springtime. A lot of times in springtime, I don't even have to do this because it rains a lot in the spring. And it just flushes all that water out of there. But... It's not spring yet. This is still February. This is uh, February 20th, 2017. And we're seeing temperatures in this, the mid-60s. Today, I believe, was over 60. I don't think it was quite 65, but it was over 60. It's a gorgeous day out today. Just the kind of a day you just want to be in a garden. Whether you work or you're just hanging out in the garden, you just want to be out there in that sun. Felt really, really good being out there today. Just awesome. You could feel the, uh, the you could feel spring coming in. You know, it's just a good feeling. Even though everything is kind of still dormant and dead around you, the grass is all dead. None of the plants are coming up. But uh, about two months, it's going to be green everywhere. So, can't wait. So, yeah, there's some more of those brown ones. There's some of the minnows in there, too. You see those little little white ones? Those are minnows. Or rosies, they call them. They're pretty hardy little fish. All these fish that are in there are pretty hardy. It, a lot of times, it gets down, you know, single digits, even below zero. Now, if it gets really cold, like 10 or 20 below zero, and it stays that way for weeks on end, which I have seen, it kills everything in a pond. That pond will freeze solid to the very bottom. That's why I suggest if you do decide to do a pond, you got to have a section of the pond. Some, somewhere in that pond, you got to have a section that's like 5 or 6 feet deep so all your fish can swim down to that. And they'll live out their life under the winter, you know, they'll winter out under the ice through the deep parts. Because sometimes it could freeze even as deep as three feet thick. So, it's a really good idea to make sure you got at least five feet somewhere in your pond. Real deep. Yep, there's a dead frog. He's just hanging out. There's all the minnows. You see those little white ones swimming in there. I don't know. They were all... All the fish were hanging out over here by the water. And as soon as I came up with the camera, they all split. There's a good amount of those fish in there. Those little ones. Those minnows and those brown ones. Which, whatever they are. It's a good amount of them in there. They are all hanging out in there before I got there. Yep, she's looking for a place to lay her eggs. Looking for a little food. Yep, they're loving it. That water change is, is really good for them. Here they are, they're starting to school now. That one's a pretty big one. That one's got some size on it. Now, if I start feeding them like goldfish food on a regular basis, they'll get a lot bigger very quickly. In one year, they'll double in size. Easy. One season, like one summer, if I start feeding them every day, 
they'll get huge. I don't necessarily want them to get huge. I want them to be able to eat the bugs and stuff that fall into the pond. Now, I have never fed these fish food since I put them in there. I've never fed them. They feed, they live off of whatever's in the pond. The plants, the bugs that fall in there, that is their, their destiny. That's how they have to survive. Now, yes, I could buy food and put it in there and feed them, but I, I'm not looking to do that. I want them to be able to survive on the environment around them. And these, this is going on their third year now. Their third winter, so whatever that is. Maybe, what is that, four years? It's like three winters. Just the, this winter that we just went through was the third winter. So, and I've never fed them. So they grow according to, you know, the insects that they eat. And they also grow according to, I guess, what would you say, um... Sonority? Not sonority, but, you know, the biggest fish is always going to get the meal, you know. There's certain fish that are going to get larger than the other fish in, in any kind of lake or anything like that. You're always going to get one fish that's going to get a lot larger. You always got that monster in there. Well, there's a reason for that. Survival of the fittest, I guess, or something like that. So they find food, but you wouldn't think that they find food in there, but they find food, they eat that stuff, the plants and things. Now I would like to introduce some other aquatic insects and halgamites and things like that to it down the road. As I come across them, I will introduce them to the pond, so... Try to diversify the life inside that pond a little bit. I do plan on adding snails to this pond. I have pond snails that I raise indoors. So usually by springtime I'll have literally thousands of those pond snails. I put them in there and they're good uh, scavengers. They definitely clean up the water. They're very good to have in a pond. Snails are definitely a plus. And I might get a couple of the uh, tadpole snails. Not tadpole, trapdoor snails, they call them. They're like big, they're like the size of a small apple. They get huge. And they winter, they live through the winters and everything. But they're very good, uh... Very good for the, for the pond because they, they filter the algae out of the water. Like if you get algae that's, you know, waterborne algae, instead of growing on a rock, it's just in the water like you see here. They will actually filter that out and survive off of that. They're not necessarily looking for plants to eat or algae on rocks. They filter it out of the water, like a clam would do. Very similar to a clam. They're very good for, for ponds. So I might get a couple of those, put them in there. One or, one or two, if I see them in the pet store, I'll pick them up. I'm not going to go out of my way. Like I say, I'm probably going to sell this house, so I don't want to sink too much more into it. What it is, is what it is. That's the way it stays. But yeah, it's very peaceful. Very relaxing. So, if you do start a pond and you're wondering what kind of fish should you put in there, you could go with koi, but they're just expensive. Koi are not cheap. I mean, these, what you're looking at right now, these were feeder goldfish that I bought. I think I paid 10 cents a piece for them or something like that. It's ridiculously cheap. And then the minnows, you can get those like 25 or 30 for a dollar or something like that. So yeah, you buy a couple of dollars of those and you put them in the pond. This is what you get. It's good enough for now. And if you like the way things are, and the pond is, you know, working out good for you, then you can sink a little money into, you know, buying some koi or something like that. At least now you know that fish will be able to survive in this environment. You don't want to go spending all this money on very expensive fish and find out that for some reason they don't live. And that could happen.
but for now it's good enough. I'm sure the new owners will either like it or plow it flat, fill it in, who knows. I don't care at this point. It's good enough for me though, while I'm here. Yep, it was a gorgeous day. And it was nice hanging out with the fish. Take a few minutes out just to watch them. And very pleasant and peaceful. Really enjoyable. Alright, well, anyway, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like this video, like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.